Brachondylar fracture of humerus is the most common fracture around the elbow in children. It is most common fracture following fall on outstretched hand in children. Okay. So coming to definition, definition is fracture occurring just above the two condyles of the lower end of humerus is known as supracondylar fracture of humerus. The age group in which it is common is 5 to 10 years of age. What is the mode of injury? It is fall on an outstretched hand as you can clearly see. The hand is outstretched. If, uh, what is the mechanism of injury? Hyperextension is the mechanism of injury. You can see in this image clearly that the hand is hyperextended. A class, which class does this fracture fall in? It is Salter Harris type 2 or 1, 2 greater than 1. Uh, remember, uh, you need to study the Salter Harris type uh, classification also. Okay. Then coming to types of uh, supracondylar fracture of humerus. On the basis of displacement of distal segment, uh, it is divided into two types, extension type and flexion type. Essentially, all the supracondylar fracture of humerus are extension type. Flexion type is very rare. As you can see, this is the distal fragment. It is displaced, it is extended posteriorly. Okay, so extension type and this is the flexion type. Okay, uh, displacement of the distal fragment. Uh, what is the uh, sequence in which displacement occurs? First, uh, you need to remember this uh, by imagining the whole situation. First of all, the distal segment undergoes proximal migration. Okay, then it will undergo medial tilt, which is assessed by Baumann's angle. Okay, then it will undergo medial shift. Then it will undergo internal rotation. Then posterior tilt and then posterior shift okay internal rotation <coughs> once happens then uh, uh, on x-ray fish tail sign will be seen okay it is clearly drawn here like uh, this is the normal thing then fracture occurs here in the supracondylar region the displacement and internal rotation of the distal segment occurs so this appears like tail of fish okay so the fish tail sign on x-ray uh, coming to the classification for supracondylar fracture of humerus there is a guideline classification okay uh, this guideline classification says that supracondylar fracture could be divided of the humerus could be divided into three types type 1 type 2 type 3 type 1 is basically undisplaced type 2 is partially displaced uh, and incomplete fracture type 3 is complete fracture okay type 1 on radiology we will be seeing fat fat sign okay then coming to uh, next thing the type 2 type 2 the posterior cortex is attached it is incomplete fracture while type 3 is complete fracture and the uh, displacement has taken place how will we manage management is based on the type of pattern classification of supracondylar fracture of humerus type 1 will be managed with the help of plaster of paris okay type uh, 2 will be managed by reduction plus pop that is plaster of paris or k wire that is kirchner's wire closed manipulation and reduction plus maintenance of reduction okay type 3 will be managed by open reduction internal fixation with k wire because complete uh, fracture is there. Coming to the complications of supracondylar fracture of humerus. The complications are divided into immediate and late on the basis of when they occur. Immediate may, first one is injury to the brachial artery, which will lead to Voxman ischemia. Okay? Or uh, if uh, now injuries we see, then median now could be injured, ulnar now also could be injured, and radial now also could be injured. There is a diagram given here. Uh, humerus associated with all the major nerves. Okay? So see this brachial artery could be injured, median now, radial now also passes somewhere here itself. So MBBR, remember the mnemonic from medial to lateral, passing from the uh, elbow region. Yeah. Uh, then coming to the late complications, uh, Voxman ischemic contracture. Due to Voxman ischemia, there will be a contracture of the muscle. So Voxman ischemic contracture, then malunion could occur, resulting into gunstock deformity. See here, malunion has occurred, and this gunstock deformity has taken place. Then myositis ossificans and limitation of movement. This is the mechanism of Voxman ischemia. Ischemia occurs, leads to tissue necrosis, leads to edema which leads to increased intercompartmental pressure, which leads to compression and further tissue, uh, further tissue necrosis. This is a vicious cycle which keeps on continuing. 